Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's Community Engagement Meeting for two major initiatives in the Cypress Creek watershed. In this presentation, we will give a brief overview of those initiatives. You will have the chance to ask questions and learn more details during the open house portion of the meeting. Before we get to those projects, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district created by the Texas Legislature in 1937 in response to devastating floods that hit the Houston area in 1929 and 1935. The Flood Control District was created to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction. Our mission has greatly expanded over 80 years with billions of dollars in infrastructure improvements in the ground. While we are a separate entity from Harris County, the Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our governing body. The mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work with appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 22 main watersheds, each with its own unique characteristics and needs. Tonight, we are in the Cypress Creek watershed of Northwest Harris County. Our area is flood prone. Here are some reasons why. We should also add that a large portion of Harris County, including Cypress Creek, was developed before our current understanding of floodplains and restrictions on building in the floodplain. On August 25, 2018, Harris County voters approved $2.5 billion in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of more than 200 bond projects, including more than $291 million in projects for Cypress Creek. All Cypress Creek projects have been initiated. An additional $2.3 billion in partnership funding could bring the total to $4.8 billion countywide. The purpose of this meeting today is to present two key bond projects that cover a large portion of the Cypress Creek watershed. But first, we want to provide a brief overview of the watershed and the Flood Control District's approach in this unique area. Cypress Creek is the largest watershed in Harris County, covering 267 square miles in Harris and Waller counties and with 250 miles of natural and man-made channels. By population, this is the fifth largest of the county's 22 main watersheds. The downstream or eastern portion of the watershed was mostly developed in the 1980s before our current understanding of floodplains. Thousands of homes were built in flood-prone areas. The upstream or western portion was developed later with more robust development regulations requiring stormwater detention to prevent downstream flooding impacts. A flood control district master watershed study estimated it would cost $1 billion to provide protection from a 10-year storm in the Cypress Creek watershed, $4.5 billion for protection from a 100-year storm, and $13 billion for protection from a 500-year storm. These estimates do not include Little Cypress Creek. With this challenging landscape, the Harris County Flood Control District's priority in the watershed has been property acquisition, which is often the most expensive part of any flood risk reduction project. The Flood Control District uses the Home Buyout Program to reduce flood damages in areas where other options are not cost effective and or beneficial. Since the Voluntary Home Buyout Program began in the 1980s, the Flood Control District has acquired nearly 400 homes in the Cypress Creek watershed, including more than 80 since Hurricane Harvey. Much of that was acquired as channel right-of-way and floodplain preservation. The Flood Control District now owns more than 6,000 acres of property in the watershed. In the past 10 years, the Flood Control District has spent nearly $71 million in the watershed, including $52 million for buyouts and capital improvement projects, and nearly $19 million for maintenance. Completed maintenance in the watershed includes erosion repairs, channel restoration, and a $515,000 effort after the 2016 tax day flood to remove 32,000 cubic yards of storm debris, including 108 storm damaged trees. In the two years since Harvey, the Flood Control District has spent an additional $1.8 million to remove storm debris, including hundreds of downed trees along 25 miles of Cypress Creek. 
$4 million has been spent so far in the watershed to repair drainage infrastructure damaged during Harvey. A total of $22.6 million will be used for these repairs by the year 2020. Tonight's meeting will focus on two major initiatives in the Cypress Creek watershed. Both match the Flood Control District's criteria for projects that can be done relatively quickly, cost-effectively, and with the most flood risk reduction benefit. The first initiative we will discuss tonight combines three bond projects requested by Cypress Creek residents who participated in developing the 2018 bond program. We were asked to update a 2003 regional drainage plan for the Cypress Creek watershed. We were also asked to investigate two related stormwater detention basin projects, one to expand the existing Cypress Park stormwater detention basin off Eldridge Parkway, and the other to explore possible sites near Stubner Airline Road. To update the regional drainage plan, we looked at recommendations for eight of Cypress Creek's nine tributaries. We did not include Little Cypress Creek, which is separately addressed by the Little Cypress Creek Frontier Program. We found that the watershed landscape is now more developed than in 2003. Also, our understanding of flood risk has greatly improved since then. We know that some of the earlier suggestions are no longer viable or are unnecessary. These slides illustrate that recommendations from 2003 for undeveloped land would be difficult or impossible to achieve because of new development in the area. However, other recommendations can be adapted to current conditions. Recommendations for improvements to the eight tributaries include new stormwater detention basins, channel improvements, construction of new channels, preservation of stream corridors, buyouts, and neighborhood drainage improvements. We'll have more details in the open house portion of the program. Much of the flood risk to tributaries involve water from Cypress Creek backing up into the tributaries and preventing them from flowing. Tributary projects will not fix this issue. Instead, stormwater detention along Cypress Creek and its tributaries would be most effective at reducing flood risk. We're recommending increasing stormwater detention in the watershed by more than 24,000 acre feet. You can think of an acre foot as one foot of water across a football field. Now imagine more than 24,000 acre feet. This increase in stormwater detention could reduce the water height along Cypress Creek between US 290 and I-45 and remove the 100-year floodplain from hundreds of structures. In total, we are recommending $743 million in new detention, channel projects, and buyouts along Cypress Creek and its tributaries. The 2018 bond program does not include enough funding to complete all these projects, but we intend to get started with preliminary engineering and property acquisition and to seek additional funding. The Flood Control District is exploring options for other projects to increase floodwater storage in the upstream end of Cypress Creek. Reservoir options have been proposed in the past, and the Corps of Engineers is currently evaluating a reservoir option of their own. The Flood Control District is also investigating numerous shallow storage options. Combined with the detention proposed for this project, this would further reduce the flood risk along Cypress Creek. There will be future public meetings about these projects as they advance. Today we have discussed the results of a feasibility study. It will take several years before the projects mentioned in this feasibility study progress to construction. The next step is for each individual project to move to preliminary engineering, which includes developing alternatives and determining any necessary property acquisition and utility relocations. After that would come the design stage, and then construction. We will present information about these stages as they advance. Please bring your questions about this project to the open house portion of the program. The second initiative for discussion tonight is major maintenance on Cypress Creek. Major maintenance includes removing silt and blockages, repairing erosion, and replacing failed outfall pipes. This work is intended to return tributaries to their original or most recent design condition so they can efficiently carry stormwater out of the neighborhoods and down the channel. Major maintenance does not include widening or deepening a channel, which may trigger the need for federal environmental permitting, causing delays and increase in costs. 
the major maintenance project is funded with $60 million from the bond program. This is to catch up with the maintenance that previously lacked funding and to ensure a more proactive approach moving forward. The major maintenance project is intended to eventually include all channels in the Cypress Creek watershed if the bond funding will allow. However, it starts with the first 24 miles of channels. Surveying is underway on the first 24 miles from west of State Highway 249 to east of the Hardy Toll Road, near the point where Cypress Creek flows into Spring Creek. Construction will begin in early 2020. As we mentioned before, this is not the only maintenance project involving the Cypress Creek watershed. There are also Harvey repair projects and other drainage infrastructure repairs, some that are watershed wide. Many of these are already underway and in some locations complete. The $60 million major maintenance project we are discussing today complements these active projects. Routine annual maintenance will continue as always. You can help by letting us know about specific erosion and maintenance issues that you see. Although we have property managers who are out in the field inspecting our infrastructure, we know the importance of eyes in the neighborhood. The next steps for major maintenance are to continue surveying, to prepare more projects for the 2019 construction bidding, and start construction in early 2020. Detailed maps of this project are available in the open house portion of tonight's meeting. This completes our formal presentation. We invite you to bring your questions and comments to the open house portion of the meeting. Engineers and subject matter experts from the Flood Control District and their consultants are eager to discuss these projects with you. Please be sure to fill out your comment forms and check the website for project updates. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting.